Even the swimming pools are Texas shaped and Texas sized here north of Fort Worth. Jeff Gordon's still your leader, but look, he's got company. Jeff Burton is now right on his bumper as Gordon negotiates heavy traffic. While we were away, Bobby Labonte made an unscheduled stop for overheating, and Kenny Wallace came to pit road, put the hood up, and they have pushed his furniture row racing machine to the garage. Doesn't surprise me that a lot of guys got a smoke down the back over there. Mike Bliss oh. in the 49 car, hard licked to the front. Racing for the Paralyzed Veterans of America. One of a number of charity initiatives this weekend here at the track pva.org and let's see what happened to Mike Bliss look way up the top of your screen my car just snapped around it looked like it did and that's not unusual for this place uh, I'm not sure if one of the red if one of the Red Bull cars I don't think they made contact I think that Mike oh. just got loose coming off two over there and uh, the thing snapped around on him Vickers in the 83 car was right behind him but let me tell you who that really benefits. Of course, I still think they're in huge trouble. All three Everham cars were just about to go a lap down the 9, the 19, and the 10. Yep. Organization that just dominated the mile and a half racetracks last year. And Sterling had just gotten lapped. He gets a lucky dog. And I talked to him this morning. He said, DW, we changed everything on the car with the steering wheel. <laughs> well, it's going to be feeding time on pit road because I'm sure you're going to see here 44 laps in there. We were about 10 laps away from what would have been green flag stops. You see Mike Bliss out of his 49 car. But everybody will be to pit road four tires and adjustments. So let's head there to Dick Bergeron. And Matt Kenseth started this race in the fourth position, Mike. Dropped back to the seventh spot. The problem is the car has got a good bit of a push to it. And he has asked for several adjustments to be made to the car on this pit stop. Crew standing by, ready to do those adjustments. It's a great car. It's the same car that Kenseth won the California race with. He was third in it in Atlanta, fourth in it at Vegas. And here he is. Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch started 17th. He is up to 6th. He is one of the fastest cars out here, and that is why they are making no adjustments on this stop. Four tires only. Matt. Burton and Johnson hit pit road in 2nd and 3rd. Johnson calling for a track bar adjustment. His car needed more help in the forward bite area. So did Burton. Just a slight air pressure adjustment for the 31, Steve. Matt, adjustments for Dale Earnhardt Jr. as he exits pit road and Jeff Gordon. Gordon said his car had gone from tight in the middle to tight off. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car he said it's rolling over on the right rear too heavy. Tell you what, guys, the real winner on this battle on pit road, though, that 17 car, Robbie Riser, you see, gained two positions. He was in his pit box, almost completed with his pit stop before some of the competitors even got to their box. The front four come out the way they went in as we work the second caution flag of the day. Hey, race fans, you grab the bud, I'll grab the trophy. First, Elliott Sadler, and now the number seven of Robbie Gordon have stayed out on track to lead a lap under this caution period. Gordon, who wrecked a car earlier this weekend, is the present leader. Yesterday, Justin Hutchinson of Springfield, Missouri, Got a brand new Chevy Silverado. And look who's making the delivery. What's up, man? How you doing, man? Hey, how are you? Very good, very good. Here to give you a brand new uh, Chevy Silverado. Oh, man, I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait. Yeah, you know how it is? Yeah. Y'all? Not only did Justin win a new truck, Junior took him for a ride around the track to break it in. Dale Junior signed the dash. Junior has a Silverado of his own and left his mark on the truck, and Justin gets to bring the 2007 Motor Trend Truck of the Year home to Missouri. Congratulations. You know, Mike, let's explain why Robbie Gordon would stay out to lead a lap, why Elliott Sadler would stay out to lead a lap. We talked about it earlier when Jeff Gordon led that first lap. When you lead a lap in a race, not for every lap, a lap, it's five bonus points. And we know those five bonus points could be so important, staying in the top 35, getting to the top 12. A lot of reasons those five points could be critical, even here on race number seven. Remember, 12 make the chase for the Nextel Cup 
Elliott Sadler 13th in points, so all those bonus points are important. Next week, Fox coverage of Nextel Cup Racing continues at Phoenix in prime time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on Saturday. Then, Sunday, April 29th, Talladega. The biggest, deepest speedway coverage begins at 1.30 Eastern. And then Saturday, May 5th, a night race at Richmond on the three-quarter mile beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Coverage of NASCAR continues in high definition on Fox. Here's our singular virtual crew chief answer. Where will Dale Jr. race next year? You said Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, 60%. I would have had another one. They should have had that other team. Maybe it should have been his own team, oh. JR Motorsports. Text your virtual crew chief question, and maybe you'll see it show up on one of our Fox telecasts. Getting set to go back to green here. Next time by, 49 laps complete. At Texas Motor Speedway, Jeff Gordon has led 47 of those. All except for the two led by Elliott Sadler and Robbie Gordon under this caution. Well, he's talking about bonus points. Uh, Jeff Gordon's got 30 bonus points already this year. He and Matt Kenseth have got the most. They both have 30. So pretty darn important. Let's get an update on Kenseth, Dick Bergman. Well, he's going to restart in the fifth position, Mike, but the most important news is that Robbie Reiser has radioed his driver and told him the tires look excellent, perfect. And he said after looking at their notebooks, they're confident that they made the adjustments in the correct direction. Here comes Kenseth. <laughs> Thanks, Boy, the, he came yesterday, too. He uh, spun out. All, I, I don't know how he kept from wrecking his car yesterday. Spun that bad boy out, saved it, got tires on it, marched back through the field, and won an exciting race yesterday over Denny Hamlin. Hey, talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr., though, Daryl and Mike, I've been watching him. Remember, he started back in the 12th position. He's up into the fourth. And the biggest thing, he had moved all the way to the top of the racetrack at both ends. Take a look at the scoreboard here. They do a lot of neat different things in Texas. They not only tell you how many laps have been completed in the race, they also tell you how many laps to go. I like it. Texas is the home of Texas Instruments that provides us with our DLP HDTV Ultimate Picture Cam. Suspended on cables above the speedway, and that's how you see this restart. You know, with that information, I, that's what a driver wants to know. You never ask how many laps have we run. You always ask how many laps do we have to go. So I think from a driver's perspective, looking at the scoreboard, and we do, fans like to know that too. Well, that's why we also show it to you uh, at the top of our screen up there on the rundown. Because every racetrack seemingly has a different number of laps in its race. It's not consistent week to week. What is consistent is Jeff Burton. That car has been strong all day, and he is just gnawing away at the rear bumper of Jeff Gordon for the lead. Meanwhile, back at the pass. Whoa, that's a mini wad right there. Tight, tight pack. Steve Burns. Mike, Larry McReynolds was just talking about the line that Dale Earnhardt Jr. was running around the high side. Carl Edwards restarted this race, or the, restarted in the 10th position. He likes his car, but so far hasn't found a good place to run. So his crew chief, Bob Osborne, has been telling him that the 26, the 17, and the number 8 are running the high side, while other cars are running the bottom. So Carl's trying to find a good spot to run. Matt? Under caution, Jeff Burton told his team that it was just starting to get exciting when the caution came out. He says the car balance-wise had really shifted. Even though they were about 10 laps shy when they would have pitted, his team told him, your tires look good because they did show some wear on that outside shoulder of the right front during practice. Thanks, Matt. You're watching on the right, Denny Hamlin looking back. At Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart. That is ninth place on back. Just watching Jeff Burton there in the 31 car behind Jeff Gordon in the 24. Remember, Jeff Burton comes in here second in the points. So what he would love to do is get up there. We've been talking about these bonus points. He'd love to get five points for leading a lap in this race if he can get to Jeff Gordon. In fact, right now, first, second, third, or first, second, third in the next Dell Cup points chase. The front four exited the pitch the way they came in. And <laughs> look at this, Martin Truex 
threading the needle between Montoya and Boyer making the pass. <laughs> I talked to Juan Pablo Montoya this morning. He said, you know, the interesting thing when he listens to a spotter, when he says two wide, he goes, okay. When he hears three wide, he goes, oh. When he hears four he wide, he goes, he goes, oh, no, four wide. <laughs> 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 he, is, he is an interesting guy to talk to, Juan Pablo Montoya. He's funny. He's really funny. I think, did somebody get against the wall? Yeah, I think that was Clint Boyer in the 07. Matt? Mike, that's exactly who it was. Boyer said the car just will not turn at all. That was his complaint before the pit stop. They made an air pressure and a chassis adjustment to try to fix that. It hasn't helped. You can see now he's running the middle, just trying to hold on, losing another position. About to get back to the bottom now. After this 13, you'll be a hole. Let's show you what happened. Watch the black 07. And again, it's just exit of these corners. The cars just kind of lose grip all at once, and that's the result right there. And that's exactly what happened to the six car, David Reagan, at the very first of the race when he lost grip on the exit. Tony Stewart on the outside of McMurray. This is for eighth place. I would say that Mr. Stewart got his car fixed. Well, you heard Chris DeVoto talking about he told Greg Zipidelli and his crew, my car is junk. And he knew they were going to have to make major adjustments on that car. They went to the right. They went the right way because he's passed Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin, uh, McMurray. He's passed all those guys in the last two or three laps. And moving on, another driver on the move is Greg Biffle. His number 16 has gone around Mark Martin and climbed up to 12th place, just behind this group. Yeah, Greg started back in the 21st position, and a lot like. Casey Kane last year, two or three years ago, Greg Biffle pretty much owned. We got another Cardinal, car that was almost Kyle up Petty, the wall. Who had just made a pit stop, came out, and did he hit the wall in four? It looked like he did. Uh, he, or he did the same thing earlier, like he had a flat tire. I think he's got something broken on the right front because he went off in the corner down in one and two, shot up the hill. He came to pit road. They worked on it or put tires on it. He went right back out and did the same. I believe he has something broken on the right front. Yeah, he's just trying to ride around on the apron and make it back to pit road. Right now he's over at turn two. No caution, we stay green. 